This is Every Country in the World Part 2 by Wendover Productions. If you haven't seen Part 1, click here to watch that first. We left off last time in Suriname, our 98th country. Suriname is the only country other than the Netherlands whose sole primary language is Dutch. Although there are other countries that speak a Creole version of Dutch, like Namibia, which speaks Afrikaans, which is just close enough to Dutch that a Dutch and Namibian could hold a conversation. Namibia has this long protrusion which gives them access to the Zambezi River, although they miss out by about 300 feet on bordering Zimbabwe, which is the country ferries have to pass through when making the 600 foot trip from Botswana to Zambia. This is likely the shortest ferry in the world to cross through three countries. To the northeast of Zambia is one of the world's 176 tri-points, triple border crossings. This one links Zambia to Malawi and Tanzania, whose northern border is a very straight line across Lake Victoria, which creates these two tiny cut-off peninsulas. Uganda is a surprisingly progressive nation, with the highest representation of women in parliament in the world at 63%. They also became the first country in the world to outright ban plastic bags in 2007. The Solomon Islands, on the other hand, only has one woman in their parliament, or 2% representation. The Solomon Islands is home to the West Georgia Islands, which share a name with Georgia, which kind of shares a name with Georgia's plain in Jamaica, which is one of two countries in the world whose flag doesn't share colors with the American flag, as in no red, white, or blue. The other one is Mauritania, but Libya used to be on that list until they changed their flag from this to this in 2011. Libya is so large that its northwest point is closer to Luxembourg than to its southeast point. Luxembourg has the second highest per capita income in the world behind Qatar, a small but mighty country that's just a bit larger than Lebanon, who shares a southern border with a United Nations Disengagement Observer Force Zone, which is an area essentially without sovereignty meant to serve as a buffer between Israeli-controlled Syria and Syria. One could call it a demilitarized zone. Although the most famous DMZ is north of South Korea, where, if you dig a hole straight down and through the earth, you'd pop up just off the coast of Uruguay. Uruguay was a military dictatorship up until 1985, but Thailand still is, the only current one. Bangkok, Thailand is the most visited city in the world, at 16 million yearly visitors, which is a ton, especially compared to Vilnius, Lithuania, which only sees 180,000 visitors per year. Lithuania has a rather straight border through this lake, which leads to two peninsulas with their tops chopped off and an internationally divided island with Belarus, which has a rather straight border in this lake, which leads to another peninsula with its top chopped off and an internationally divided island with Latvia. Latvia's Independence Day is May the 4th, aka Star Wars Day, whose scenes on Tatooine were filmed in Tunisia. Tunisia's currency is the dinar, which is also the name for the currency in Macedonia, if you look at Macedonia on a map, it will almost always have FYROM under its name, which stands for Former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia. When Macedonia became an independent country, it picked this name, but Greece wasn't all too happy about it since their northern region is also called Macedonia. So the solution was to call the country the Former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia in all official capacities, while colloquially it's still known as Macedonia. Greece is known for having a huge expatriated population around the world, and the 39th largest Greek population in the world is in Oman, in the Middle East. Inside Oman is an exclave of the United Arab Emirates, except this part of Oman is actually an enclave inside the UAE, which makes this the only double enclave in the Middle East. The UAE is one of 18 countries worldwide to not have a river, one of which is Tonga, which actually has an Olympic medal from their super heavyweight boxer, Pea Wolfgram. Another country that has one total medal is Gabon whose southern border is shared with Congo, whose southern border is shared with this rather large exclave of Angola. Only because of that exclave, Angola borders both Congo and the Democratic Republic of the Congo. These are of course two different countries, although they're both named for the Congo River, the deepest river in the world at more than 750 feet deep. Interestingly, despite being both enormous countries, their current capitals are just on opposite sides of the Congo from each other. The DRC has this great clean border with Rwanda, which causes no problems at all, unlike this one in Austria. Jungholz is only connected to the rest of Austria by about 15 feet of territory and no roads. Vienna, Austria used to be the capital of the Austria-Hungarian Empire, whose territory included present-day Italy, Poland, Germany, Croatia, Montenegro, and Serbia, all of which we've already talked about, and Bosnia and Herzegovina, the Czech Republic, Hungary, Romania, Slovakia, and Ukraine. Ukraine has this southern section, which isn't part of Russia yet, although it's only connected to the rest of Ukraine by two roads, one of which rather inconveniently passes through Moldova for only about three miles. Moldova is rated the third least touristy country in the world, since only one tourist visits each year for every 323 citizens. 
Although Bangladesh is the number one least touristy country, since for each yearly tourist visit, there are 1,273 Bangladeshi citizens. Bahrain, on the other hand, receives 7.7 .7 tourist visits per citizen per year and also has an internationally divided island, but this one was actually very purposefully created to serve as a passport control point between Bahrain and Saudi Arabia on the King Fahd Causeway. Saudi Arabia is home to Mecca, the birthplace of the central figure of Islam, the Prophet Muhammad. Mecca has a population of about 1.5 million, but during the Hajj, the yearly pilgrimage to Mecca, this triples to almost 5 million people. Land in Mecca is some of the most expensive in the world at up to $13,000 per square foot. Saudi Arabia really isn't great friends with their southern neighbor, Yemen, who owns over 200 islands, including Sakutra Island, which is surprisingly green compared to its mainland neighbors, and is the only place in the world where you can find the dragon's blood tree. Yemen's national soccer team has played Bhutan three times in the last few decades, all of which Bhutan lost rather horribly. Bhutan is home to the Gangar Puenza Mountain, which is believed to be the tallest unsummited mountain in the world since local spiritual beliefs prohibit anyone from climbing a mountain over 6,000 meters. This mountain is in the Himalayas range, which if you follow to the west, brings you to Nepal, which is of course home to Mount Everest, the tallest mountain in the world. Everest is 29,029 feet tall, 880 times higher than the Marshall Islands' tallest peak, at 33 feet. If you dig a hole straight down through the earth from the Marshall Islands, you arrive just off the coast from Liberia, which is the country of registration of 11% of the world's ships. Of the 2,771 registered ships, though, only 190 are actually owned by Liberians. Foreigners register their ships there since there are few regulations and low costs. Malta also registers many ships for the same reason, with 1,437 foreign-owned ships. Malta is a European Union member, which means that we've almost talked about every EU member. Our last two are Estonia and Ireland, whose northernmost point is actually farther north than Northern Ireland's. Ireland has played Samoa six times in rugby, and Samoa actually won once, which is quite impressive for a country of less than 200,000. Samoa's rugby team did once lose to New Zealand 101-14 though, so they're not that good. New Zealand has a kind of territory of Niue. It's recognized as a freely associated state, meaning by choice, but Niue isn't recognized by the UN as an independent country. However, Niue is exactly on the opposite side of the world from Niger which is named for the Niger River. The Niger River has probably the most bizarre river course in the world. It starts only 150 miles from the Atlantic Ocean, but then takes a 2,600 mile path to reach the ocean. It starts in Sierra Leone, flows through Guinea, Mali, Niger itself, then Benin before reaching the ocean in Nigeria. Nigeria is also named after the Niger River and is by far the most populous country in Africa at 125 million people. The least populous country in Africa is the Seychelles, which isn't on the mainland, but is still considered an African country. They also have what might be the coolest flag in the world, except for maybe St. Lucia's, but I do have to give a solid runners-up position to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. St. Vincent and the Grenadines' name is rather purposefully similar to that of its neighboring island, Grenada. Grenada's airport wasn't built until 1985, but nowadays you can fly to places like Port of Spain in Trinidad and Tobago. Trinidad is also the name of a municipality of 20,000 people in Honduras, which has two capitals, Tegucigalpa and Comayagüeya, much like the Côte d'Ivoire, whose capitals are Yamasucro and Abajan. Despite having a very easy English translation, the Ivory Coast, the Côte d'Ivoire is almost always referred to by this name since its government refuses to accept any translated name. If you draw a straight line south from Côte d'Ivoire until it crosses Antarctica and goes north, you'll end up intersecting Vanuatu, which is one of seven countries worldwide to not be part of the International Criminal Police Organization, also known as Interpol. Another non-Interpol member country is Tuvalu, which is the second smallest country in the world to have a commercial international airport. This is also the second video in a row that I've used this image. Watch my last video to find out why. Nauru is the smallest country outright to have an airport, and it rather controversially has camps for those who attempt to seek asylum in Australia, many of whom are from Iraq. Iraq borders Iran, which has 22 ski resorts. That's more than the entire South American continent. Speaking of South America, we haven't covered Paraguay, which is another one of these landlocked countries with a navy. And with that, we've touched on every South American country. If you dig a hole through the earth from Paraguay, you end up just north of the Philippines, which is our seventh to last Asian country. The other ones are Myanmar, which is one of the world's three countries not using the metric system, Timor-Leste, whose currency is the US dollar despite having no real connections to the US, 
Pakistan, which is home to the third largest non-polar glacier in the world despite being at the same latitude of South Texas, Jordan, which you may think is landlocked from looking at a map but actually has a 16-mile coast on the Red Sea, Syria, which is home to Damascus, the oldest continuously inhabited city on the planet, and Kuwait, which has the highest value currency in the world at 3.3 US dollars to each Kuwaiti dinar. With that, we've covered every Asian country, the Sao Tome and Principe Dobra, at 23,000 Dobra to the dollar. Sao Tome and Principe speaks Portuguese, which means we've covered every Portuguese-speaking country. The country is also off the coast of Cameroon, which became the first African country to reach the FIFA World Cup semifinals in 1990, although that's since been accomplished by Ghana, where the official and primary language is English, and there are only three more countries like this. Belize, the only English-speaking country in Central America, Barbados, who has the third highest human development index score in the Western Hemisphere, and Antigua and Barbuda, whose native language, Taino, is the origin of English words like canoe, barbecue, hammock, and hurricane. So, we've covered every English-speaking country, but there are two remaining countries that were part of the British Empire, Dominica, where Antillean Creole is the primary language, and Mauritius, which has the highest population density in Africa, at over 1,500 people per square mile. One of the lowest population densities in Africa is in the Central African Republic at 18 people per square mile. The Central African Republic's northern neighbor is Chad, whose embassy in Washington, D.C. is only 200 feet away from that of Burkina Faso, whose capital has perhaps the best name in the world, Kwagadugu. In the southeast of Burkina Faso is this piece of Togo that is only connected to the main part by a 300-foot wide strip of land. This area's roads, however, all come from Burkina Faso, which means that, much like Point Roberts, residents need to cross two international borders to get to their own country. There are only three African countries left. Comoros, the second largest vanilla producer in the world, Burundi, the poorest country in the world to have an Olympic medal, and Eritrea, which has neither an official or majority spoken language. Drawing a latitude line west from Eritrea brings you to Nicaragua, home to a lake on an island in a lake. More than 100,000 Nicaraguans live in nearby El Salvador, which is the smallest Central American country and the only one not to have a Caribbean coastline. El Salvador's northern neighbor is Guatemala, whose border with Mexico was originally defined by the course of the Chicxulub River, but erosion has changed the course, which created a bunch of enclaves and exclaves like this, this, and this. And that's our last country in the Western Hemisphere. We're getting close. Guatemala's embassy in Ottawa is about 900 feet away from Slovenia's, which has this really messed up border with Croatia, including this tiny section, which isn't actually claimed by either country, making it terra nullis. The 10th and final country to end in NIA, and our final country, is Albania, whose capital is one of the only in Europe to not have a McDonald's. But wait, if you draw a latitude line from the south of Albania, that brings you to the north of Afghanistan, where Albania sent 44 troops to fight in 2005, and that's where we started this video. So if you're feeling like a second round, click here to start again. I hope you enjoyed this Wendover Productions video. I'm very happy to announce that I've partnered with DFTBA to bring you Wendover Productions t-shirts which look like this. There are two ways to get one of these. You can become a patron on Patreon at the $20 level and receive a bunch of other great perks like stickers, handwritten letters, early access to videos, behind the scenes updates, and more. Or you can just purchase the shirt by itself for the very reasonable cost of $20 and have it shipped to anywhere in the world. This is the link to order that shirt or it's also in the description. Other than that, please be sure to subscribe to catch every one of my videos right when it comes out, follow me on Twitter at WhenoverPro, check out part one of every country in the world, Take a look at my fan moderated subreddit at reddit.com slash r slash Wendover Productions and contribute to my Patreon at patreon.com slash Wendover Productions. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next Tuesday for another Wendover Productions video.